The world of entertainment is no stranger to scandals, controversies, and brushes with the law. While some celebrities seem to effortlessly navigate their careers, others inevitably fall victim to addiction, anger management issues, or an unhealthy thirst for power and wealth. Today, we'll be exploring a shocking reality of 16 celebrities, once beloved and celebrated, and are currently spending time behind bars for a variety of crimes. From fraud to assault and everything in between, these former stars serve as a cautionary tale of the dark side of fame. Join us as we explore how these entertainers fell from grace and what their current lives look like now. Ricky Lamar Hawk, also known as Silento Silento is an American rapper with a net worth of $1.5 million. The 25-years-old rapper witnessed a massive 360-degree change in his life and career in 2020. He is best known for his most popular single, Watch Me, Whip Slash Nay Nay. His debut single was released in 2015 and certified five times platinum. The song has been seen more than 1.8 billion times on YouTube alone. The single peaked at number 3 in the United States and number 9 in Australia, as well as number 20 in Canada, Denmark, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and France. Barely five years after the publication of Watch Me, Whip Slash Nay Nay, Silentos' life took a dark turn when he was arrested on August 28, 2020. He was accused of assaulting his spouse. The very following day, Hawk was arrested again while searching for his fiancée, after he allegedly entered a stranger's house while carrying a hatchet. Two months later, Hawk once again found himself in handcuffs. The 25-year-old rapper was charged with murder in connection to the shooting death of his cousin, Frederick Rooks, on January 21, 2021. According to the police report, Rooks was found with multiple gunshot wounds on Deep Shoals Circle in DeKalb County, Georgia. The shooting occurred around 3.30 a.m. and Rooks was pronounced dead at the scene. A witness reported seeing multiple cars leaving the scene of the crime, but it was not until six months later when authorities identified Silento as a suspect. Silento was apprehended on August 29, 2020 after a traffic stop in DeKalb County. The rapper was pulled over for driving 143 miles per hour in a 85 miles per hour speed zone. Police later discovered that he was driving with a suspended license. During the traffic stop, police received a tip about Silento's connection to Rook's murder, which led to his arrest. He is being held at DeKalb County Jail without bail until he was formally charged with murder on February 1, 2021. The rapper is yet to enter a plea, but he has maintained his innocence. Silento's legal team has argued that there is no evidence linking him to the crime, and that the rapper was out of state at the time of the shooting. Silento's arrest for murder shocked and saddened his fans. The rapper had recently been in the news for his struggles with mental health and addiction. He had even entered a rehabilitation program just weeks before his arrest. As of now, Silento remains in jail awaiting trial and facing the possibility of life in prison if convicted. Amy Locaine Amy Rose Locaine moved from Melrose Place to a place not so rosy. Born December 19, 1971, the American television and film actress was known for her role portrayal of Sandy Harling in the first season of the primetime soap opera Melrose Place in 1992. On June 27, 2010, at 9.05 p.m., Locaine Bovenizer was involved in a fatal motor vehicle collision in Montgomery, New Jersey. She was driving 85 kilometers per hour in a 56 kilometers per hour zone. At the time, Locaine was driving under the influence of alcohol, 
and she collided with another vehicle, killing a 60-year-old woman named Helene Seaman and injuring her husband, Fred Seaman. Following the crash, she was immediately arrested. Locaine's blood alcohol level was 0.23%, which is nearly three times the limit for legal impairment. She was charged with vehicular homicide, assault by auto, and driving under the influence. She was released later from custody on $50,000 bail, but the investigation into the accident continued. In November 2012, Locaine was indicted on charges of aggravated manslaughter and assault by auto. These charges carried a potential prison sentence of between 10 and 30 years. Locaine pleaded not guilty to the charges, but she was ultimately convicted by a jury in 2013. During her trial, it was revealed that Locaine had consumed several glasses of wine before getting behind the wheel. She was also driving on a suspended license at the time of the accident. The jury found her guilty of vehicular manslaughter in the second degree and assault by auto. In 2013, Locaine was sentenced to three years in state prison. However, her sentence was later appealed, and she was granted a new sentencing hearing in 2016. At this hearing, Locaine was once again sentenced to three years in prison. In February 2019, Locaine was resentenced to five years behind bars but remained free on bail pending an appeal. On July 22, 2020, an appeals court ruled that a different judge incorrectly resentenced Locaine in 2019 and sent the case back for another sentencing. The ruling issued also rejected Locaine's argument that sentencing her again violates double jeopardy protections since she had already completed her sentence and parole term. Finally, on September 17, 2020, Locaine was sentenced to eight years in New Jersey State Prison, after a judge agreed with prosecutors that Locaine's initial sentence was too lenient. For the same crime, she was sentenced four different times. I feel she deserved what came to her because the family of the victim can never get their loved one back. Locaine will be released in December 2024. R. Kelly R. Kelly was a popular R&B singer. He was arrested in July 2019 on S-word crimes. The charges against him included the S-word abuse of minors, production of child P-word, and obstruction of justice. The arrest, however, was not sudden but was the result of several years of investigations and allegations against him. Starting in the late 1990s, R. Kelly was accused of misconduct with minors several times. However, the allegations did not impact his career, and he continued to release chart-topping albums well into the 2000s. The situation changed in 2017 when an investigative report by BuzzFeed alleged that R. Kelly was operating a cult where he was controlling the lives of multiple young women. This report sparked renewed interest in the allegations against R. Kelly, and several victims came forward with their stories. The allegations led to several investigations and trials, but R. Kelly avoided conviction for many years. However, the renewed interest in 2017 sparked a fresh wave of investigations, leading to a renewed push for his prosecution. In early 2019, a series of documentaries, Surviving R. Kelly, aired on TV, presenting damning evidence against the artist. The series renewed public interest in the allegations against R. Kelly, and his legal troubles began to mount. In February 2019, two more women came forward, alleging that R. Kelly had S-word, abused them when they were teenagers. The allegations, along with evidence gathered by several law enforcement agencies over the years, finally became strong enough to charge the artist with criminal offenses. 
He was arrested on July 11, 2019 and charged with 10 counts of S-word assault and abuse against four victims, three of whom were underage. He was later charged with producing and possessing child pornography. He was also charged with forcing victims into labor and obstructing justice. In August 2019, R. Kelly was indicted on 13 counts of S-word crimes, including more accusations of child pornography and obstruction of justice. The legal battle dragged on for many months, with R. Kelly initially denying all the allegations against him. However, in February 2021, two years after his arrest, he was finally found guilty of all charges against him. The ruling brought an end to years of allegations against the R&B star and finally brought justice to his victims. A New York court sentenced him to 30 years in 2022, for sex trafficking and racketeering. On 23rd of February 2023, a Chicago federal judge handed R. Kelly 20 more years. A jury found that he had produced three videos of himself being very inappropriate with his teenage goddaughter. The judge ruled that all but one year of the prison sentence would be served at the same time as a previous 30-year sentence that R. Kelly received. Oscar Pistorius South Africa's Oscar Pistorius became one of the world's most renowned athletes when he sprinted in the 2012 Summer Olympics in London as a double amputee, but he made headlines of another sort the following year. In the early hours of February 14, 2013, he reportedly fired four shots into a closed bathroom door, killing girlfriend Riva Steenkamp. Pistorius maintained that he thought an intruder was in his home. The prosecution claimed he killed Steenkamp after an argument. Pistorius was convicted of manslaughter in 2014 and sentenced to five years in prison. He served one year and was then put on house arrest, but his conviction was overturned and upgraded to murder by a higher court in 2015. In November 2017, his sentence was increased to 13 years and 5 months by the Supreme Court of Appeal. In March 2018, Pistorius ran out of appeals. The athlete applied for parole at the end of March 2023 but he failed. The reason for the failure was that he applied for it too early. Pistorius had applied for release on the grounds he had served half of his prison term. But a parole board spokesperson said the gold medal winner's bid was denied because he had not served the required minimum for early release. Darren Sharper Darren Sharper is a former NFL football player who played in the league from 1997 to 2010. Born on November 3, 1975, in Richmond, Virginia, Sharper was a standout athlete in his youth. He went on to play football at the collegiate level for the College of William and Mary. He joined the NFL in 1997 as a second-round draft pick for the Green Bay Packers. He played for several teams throughout his career, including the Minnesota Vikings, New Orleans Saints, and the Oakland Raiders. Over the course of his career, Sharper was considered to be one of the best safeties in the league. He was a six-time Pro Bowler, a two-time first-team All-Pro, and helped lead the New Orleans Saints to a Super Bowl victory in 2010. However, Sharper's stellar career came to an abrupt end when he was arrested in 2014 on charges of S-word assault. He was accused of drugging and raping multiple women in several states over the course of several years. After an investigation, it was revealed that Sharper had used the D-word to sedate and assault at least nine women. In 2016, he was sentenced to 18 years in prison for his crimes. Sharper's fall from grace was shocking to many in the NFL community. 
He was once regarded as a role model and was respected for his on-field prowess. However, his criminal acts exposed a darker side of the athlete and brought attention to the issue of sexual assault within sports. Joseph Sun Joseph Hyunming Sun is probably not a well-known name today, and it's a stretch to say that it ever was. Joe Sun does have a face that you might recognize, and from more than just one place. He competed in MMA as early as 1994. He also fought for the UFC and pride in a short but hardly notable career. Sun's initial exposure came as the cornerman for Kimo Leopoldo, and his celebration, along with Leopoldo. The withdrawal of Royce Gracie from UFC 3, was perhaps the shining moment of his career. By 2003, Sun's brief spotlight had primarily burned out, and he would not make another appearance in the MMA or film world. That would have probably been where the story of Joe Sun ended if not for a felony vandalism conviction in 2008. After Joe Sun was arrested for felony vandalism, he was required to provide his DNA samples to the authorities, as a condition of pleading guilty. Sun was arrested shortly after his release on a parole violation, and he was actually in custody at a facility in Orange County when his DNA results were finally processed. The provision of his DNA led to solving a 1990 rape case. The results linked Sun to a violent unsolved rape from 1990, in Huntington Beach, California. This meant that Sun competed in the UFC, Pride, and even had a brief career in Hollywood, all while guarding a secret that would have sent him away for life. The victim was just 19 years old in 1990 when she was approached by Joe Sun and Santiago Gaitan, under the guise of asking for directions. She was only footsteps from her apartment, with her dog wrapped in her coat, as the two men attacked her from multiple angles. In 2011, he was sentenced to seven years to life in prison in California for torture committed during a 1990 gang. Following beating his cellmate Michael Thomas Graham to death, he was sentenced to an additional 27 years for voluntary manslaughter. He is now serving 34 years to life. Elizabeth Holmes Elizabeth Holmes was the founder and former CEO of the blood testing company Theranos. Born on February 3, 1984, in Washington, D.C., Holmes was raised in a well-educated, wealthy family in Houston, Texas. Her father, Christian Holmes IV was an executive at Enron, and her mother, Noelle and Doust, worked for government agencies that included the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, and the United Nations. At the age of 19 years, Holmes took a leave of absence from Stanford University to start the company Theranos. The company's vision was to revolutionize blood tests and wellness checks by using a single drop of blood, instead of a needle and vial blood draw. She pitched the idea as a cheaper, faster, and painless method. But soon, the product's promise would be exposed as fraudulent. Ms. Holmes and her team promised investors and partners alike that the Theranos device could perform dozens of tests with just a few drops of blood. It was hailed as a major breakthrough in healthcare, and the company was valued at almost $10 billion in 2014. Holmes quickly became a media darling and was featured in popular magazines like Forbes and Fortune. However, it was soon discovered that the technology behind Theranos was flawed, and the actual breakthrough she had told everyone was attainable, was just smoke and mirrors. It wasn't working or was not accurately doing what she and her company claimed it could do. In 2015, a Wall Street Journal investigation exposed the fraud behind Theranos, and the company's claims. 
Holmes and her company misled investors and manipulated lab tests results, over 800 tests were found to be incorrect. The company was sued by numerous states. Holmes and Theranos faced a federal investigation. She was eventually indicted on charges of fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. She was found guilty of wire fraud and conspiracy to commit fraud that had led to millions of dollars lost by investors and partners. In November 2022, Holmes was sentenced to 11 years and 3 months in federal prison. Holmes was set to report to prison on April 27, but a last-minute appeal stalled her surrender date a second time. A judge then ruled that she had to surrender by May 30, after a court rejected her bid to remain free during her appeal. She has reported to the federal women prison in order to begin her time. Suge Knight Former music mogul Suge Knight was charged with murder and attempted murder in February 2015, following a fatal hit-and-run on the set of the hit film Straight Outta Compton, reported by the Los Angeles Times. Knight was accused of running over Terry Carter, who died, and CLE Bone Sloan, who survived, with his truck. Because of his criminal history and the seriousness of his charges, Knight's $2.2 million bail was revoked. The much-anticipated trial, which was delayed for years due to Knight's various health issues and changes in legal counsel. Fifteen lawyers joined and left from the case after his 2015 arrest. In September 2018, Knight entered a plea of no contest to voluntary manslaughter. This isn't Knight's first tussle with trouble. He was shot six times at a nightclub in 2014, and arrested for driving on a suspended license in 2013. He also landed in a hospital in 2009 after a fight at an Arizona hotel. Once again, because of his violent past, Knight received a tougher sentence than a first-time offender. He was sentenced to 28 years in prison. He is currently serving at R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego, according to KGED. He will be up for parole in 2037. Tamor Trayvon McIntyre In July 2019, Texas rapper Tamor Trayvon McIntyre, a.k.a. TK47, was found guilty for his involvement in the botched robbery and resulting of 21-year-old Ethan Walker. McIntyre was originally accused of the crime at age 16. After being certified to stand trial as an adult in the case, he was granted a bond and placed on house arrest. In early 2017, he cut off his ankle monitor and fled. McIntyre released a track called The Race on June 30, the day he was captured. The track went viral and eventually ended up charting on Billboard's Hot 100. During his life on the street, McIntyre also allegedly participated in two additional robberies, one of which resulted to the death of Mark Anthony Saldivar. McIntyre was eventually caught and brought to court for another bond hearing in March 2018, during which District Judge Wayne Salvant denied the request for bond and admonished him for scenes in The Race video where he's brandishing a handgun and standing next to a wanted poster of himself. The judge added, I don't know what this country has become when people can go out and allegedly commit heinous crimes and be glorified for it. McIntyre was later sentenced to 55 years in prison. In November 2019, he was indicted for the April 2017 murder of Saldivar. Jared Fogel Jared Fogel was a former spokesperson for the Subway fast food chain, who gained national attention in the late 1990s and early 2000s for his remarkable weight loss. He was born on December 1, 1977, in Indianapolis, Indiana and grew up in a middle-class Jewish family. Jared had a difficult childhood,
being overweight at an early age. He was also bullied in school. He attended Indiana University but did not complete his degree, dropping out in 1998. In 1998, at the age of 21, Jared weighed 425 pounds and was considered clinically obese. He decided to make a change in his life and began eating Subway sandwiches regularly, while also exercising. He claims to have lost over 200 pounds in just a year by simply eating Subway's low-fat sandwiches. He then became a spokesperson for Subway and traveled around the country, promoting the brand, and sharing his incredible weight loss journey. He soon became a household name, and people around the country began to follow his diet. Jared Fogle starred in over 300 Subway TV commercials. As an actor, he is known for Jack and Jill, 2011, Sharknado 2, the second one, 2014, and Sharknado 3, Oh Hell No. 2015. His life took a dark turn in 2015 when he was investigated and charged with possessing and distributing child P word and having S word with minors. In July of the same year, he pleaded guilty to all charges and was sentenced to 15 years and 8 months in federal prison. As a result of his conviction, Subway discontinued their relationship with him. The company removed all promotional material featuring Jared from their restaurants. He is serving his time at Federal Correctional Institution, Englewood. His earliest possible release date is March 2029. Allison Mack Allison Mack, best known for her role as Chloe Sullivan on the hit television series, Smallville, ended up in jail due to her involvement in a sex cult called Nexium. In 2018, Mack was arrested and charged with sex trafficking, sex trafficking conspiracy, and forced labor conspiracy. She was accused of recruiting women into a secret society within Nexium called DOS, Dominus Obsequia Sororium, which reportedly operated as a master-slave relationship. Prosecutors alleged that Mack and the group's leader, Keith Ranieri, required female members to provide collateral, such as nude pictures or damaging information about themselves, as a form of blackmail to ensure their allegiance. The women were allegedly branded with Ranieri's initials and coerced into having sex him. Mack was said to be heavily involved in recruiting and grooming women for Ranieri. She even led a women's empowerment group within the organization. As authorities closed in on Ranieri, he fled to Mexico with Mac and others to try to reconstitute the group there. He was arrested and sent to the United States in March 2018. Mac was arrested a few days later. Mac initially pleaded not guilty to the charges and was released on a $5 million bond eventually changed her plea to guilty. She admitted to being a part of the scheme and apologized to the victims, during her sentencing. In the end, she was sentenced to 36 months for racketeering and 36 months for racketeering conspiracy, both to be served concurrently. She will also have three years of post-release probation. Additionally, she was fined $20,000. Allison Mack entered the custody of the Bureau of Prisons, BOP, on September 13, 2021, at the Federal Correctional Institution, FCI, Dublin in Dublin, California. She is to be released on March 29, 2024. William Hayden William Hayden's life took a dramatic turn, from a well-known gunsmith and television personality to a convicted child M-word, currently serving a sentence in Angola, the largest prison in the United States. Born on January 1, 1972, in Red Jacket, West Virginia, Hayden joined the U.S. Marine Corps at the age of 18. After leaving the military, he became a self-taught gunsmith. 
He owned a gun shop in Louisiana, where he also hosted a popular gun show on public television. He is best known as the star of the 2011-2014 Discovery Channel reality series Sons of Guns. He is known for The Outsider, 2014, and Fox and Friends, 1998. He went to prison in 2017 for aggravated R word and one count of forcible R word. In her testimony, a 15 year old girl narrated how Hayden R word her multiple times when she was between 11 and 12 years old. This led to the former gun shop owner and Marine being sentenced to two life sentences, to run concurrently, plus 40 years, to run consecutively. He's not eligible for any probation parole or a suspended sentence. As if that was not enough in July 2017 he was sentenced to a third life sentence for our word, plus 10 years for aggravated incest of his daughter. Joe Exotic His real name is Joseph Maldonado Passage. He is a former zoo owner from Oklahoma who rose to fame through his popular Netflix documentary, Tiger King. He was born on March 5, 1963, in Garden City, Kansas, and grew up in a dysfunctional family. Joe had a troubled past and experienced several personal tragedies. His older brother, Gerald Wayne, died in a car accident, and his father committed suicide when he was young. Joe has an outgoing personality and frequently wore flamboyant outfits, including sequin jackets adorned with large animal prints. His signature mullet hairstyle became his trademark look. By the age of 19, Joe was already working with exotic animals. Eventually, he would become a prolific zoo owner, amassing one of the largest collections of big cats in the United States. Joe founded the Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park in Oklahoma in 1999, which he would run for nearly two decades. His zoo was infamous because of its unconventional practices and mistreatment of animals. He mainly attracted visitors by offering them a chance to pet both cubs and full-grown big cats. He also staged cheap but dangerous shows to attract customers, such as having tigers jump through fire hoops or using them as props in magic shows. Joe Exotic became the subject of controversy when he was accused of killing five of his tigers to create space for other animals on his property. He later faced animal abuse charges for the mistreatment of animals on his zoo. He also faced federal charges of a murder-for-hire plot against Carol Baskin, an animal rights activist who had threatened legal action against Joe's zoo for animal abuse. Joe went as far as to hire hitmen to kill Baskin, but he was eventually caught, tried, and convicted. He is currently serving a 22-year prison sentence for his actions. In 2022 he petitioned for compassionate release due to cancer but was denied. He is incarcerated at the Federal Medical Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Hiroshi Ogawa Hiroshi Ogawa was born on April 2, 1962, in Japan. He was an accomplished professional baseball pitcher who made his debut in the Nippon Professional Baseball League for the Latte Orions. He spent most of his career with the Orions from 1982 to 1994. Ogawa became known for his impressive pitching skills and was able to help lead his team to victory on numerous occasions. Throughout his career, he earned several accolades and was recognized for his contributions to the sport. Later, he worked for them as an assistant coach until 1999. After leaving the club he ran into severe money issues and had tons of debt. In November 2004, Ogawa's life took a shocking turn when he was convicted for murder of a 67-year-old woman named Kazuko Nishiuchi. To settle some debts, he decided to rob an industrial waste company he worked for. He confronted the housekeeper of the chairman of the industrial waste disposal company in his home. 
When he saw that he couldn't get what he wanted, he decided to get the housekeeper out of the way. He knocked her out. He stole 1.75 million yen from the house and carried the 67-year woman with him. To cover his track he later dumped her body in a nearby pond where she drowned. With a charge sheet reading assault, grand theft and murder, Ogawa received life in prison. The conviction shocked the Japanese baseball world, and many of his former teammates and fans were left in disbelief. Ogawa's once promising career was tarnished by his actions, and he is now remembered more for his crime than for his pitching skills. Michael Jace It's hard when we see our favorite actors commit the same crimes they arrest bad guys for in movies. Michael Andrew Jace was born on July 13, 1962, in Patterson, New Jersey. He went on to pursue a career in acting, landing a number of small roles in various television shows and movies. However, his most notable role was perhaps that of Los Angeles police officer Julian Lowe in the FX drama series, The Shield, which aired from 2002 to 2008. Jace played the role for the entirety of the show's seven-season run, making him a familiar face to many viewers. Despite his success as an actor, Jace had a troubled personal life. He was married to Jennifer Bitterman, with whom he had two children. However, in 2014, Jace was arrested for the murder of his wife. According to reports, Jace shot his wife multiple times in their home in front of their two young children. Jace's case received national attention due to his acting career and the brutal nature of the crime. He shot her in the back and both legs, shouting, you like to run so much. Why don't you try running to heaven? Apparently she had asked for a divorce. When police arrived at the scene, they found Bitterman's body in the hallway of their home in Hyde Park, Los Angeles. Jace was arrested and charged with murder. He initially pleaded not guilty but ultimately changed his plea to guilty in 2016. He is currently a resident of Corcoran State Prison in California since 2016 where he was sentenced to 40 years to life for second degree. Josh Duggar He was a reality TV star who appeared on the popular show, 19 Kids and Counting. He was born on March 3, 1988, in Tontatown, Arkansas, to parents Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar. Josh was the oldest of their 19 children, and his family's devout Christian beliefs were often featured on the show. As a young adult, Josh worked in politics and worked on the campaign of Republican hopeful, Rick Santorum. He was also involved with the Family Research Council, a conservative Christian lobbying group. However, in 2015, the world was shocked when it was revealed that Josh had M-word, five underage girls, including some of his own sisters, when he was a teenager. The revelations resulted to the cancellation of 19 kids and counting. Josh's public image was destroyed. He issued a public apology and entered a rehab program. Unfortunately, Things only got worse for Josh when it was revealed that he had an account on the Ashley Madison website, which facilitated extramarital affairs. In 2019, it was announced that Josh Duggar was being investigated by the Department of Homeland Security for possessing child P-word. On April 29, 2021, he was arrested on two federal charges of receiving and possessing child P-word. He admitted to cheating on his wife and also to having a pornography addiction. These revelations led to the cancellation of his family's reality show. The judge sentenced him to 12 years and 7 months in prison. He is currently serving his time in Federal Correctional Institution, Segoville in Texas. It is unfortunate to see these celebrities concurrently rotting in jails for their wrongdoings. These individuals have been given fame and fortune, 
yet have made poor decisions that have led to their downfall. It is important to remember that no one is above the law, and that justice should be served equally to all individuals, regardless of their status or fame. While it may be tempting to idolize these individuals and overlook their mistakes, it is crucial to hold them accountable for their actions and to work towards a society that values integrity and morality. Hopefully, these incarcerations will serve as a reminder that fame and fortune do not exempt one from the consequences of illegal behavior.